right, this is video two for my research grant. This time I am asked to educate the viewer on how I conduct my research, as well as giving a tour of where I'll be conducting my research. This will mainly involve my forge, where I'm going to be doing period blacksmithing and farrier work with my horse. Military history is my favorite topic to study. This mainly means that I focus on all things cavalry. Regarding farrier work, every horse in the army was issued shoes, whether they were hauling goods or artillery or carrying riders. According to the 10th Earl of Pembroke, who is a primary source for my research, bad farriers were the bane of the army. He's quoted with saying, As it happens, unfortunately for us, the farriers belonging to the army are void of all real skill. He continues by saying, One finds fewer horses lame during the absence of farriers than when they are present. But farriers were critical. And I'm sure farriers at large did not harm horses in mass numbers, like they did in the army. Otherwise, there would have been no career in it. inside of my forge. What used to be my tool shed, now I've, I'm officially converting it into a forge to accommodate my blacksmithing. Though the Earl of Pembroke warns against bad farriers, shoeing horses was considered critical. Horseshoes were helpful in preventing horses from cracking and bruising their hooves over rocky terrain and when traveling long distances because shoes prevented their hooves from wearing out. A little rundown of my tools. I have safety gear like goggles and gloves. I have my tongs, a hammer. I've got my rasp and clips for farrier work, complete with a poster of my hero. Kazmir Pulaski. He served as Brigadier General of the Army Cavalry during the American Revolution. So I should say, while I'm here, and I'm giving you a tour of my forge, my very little amateur forge. The ceiling is made of wood, so what I've tried to do to accommodate that so sparks don't fly up and I lose my shed, I've insulated the roof with hard drywall and then this is a cement block. Cement block, cement is flame resistant, I've been told. And I do the same here. So it's two layers drywall, one layer cement block, and it's the same up on the roof. That was incredibly fun to install. Yeah but worth it. Uh, it's a start. It's relatively small in size. I actually have a fire going right now, hence the mask, because it's still in the smoky phase. And safety being number one, I do not want to breathe in these fumes, but I also have to get the job done. Something also to consider what they had to deal with for thousands of years as blacksmiths. To deal with the fumes, I opened all the windows in my forge and even took the door off. This way the forge had good airflow. To try and maintain a steady heat for the coals, I've placed fire brick next to the flame. This is to maintain the heat in the center of the forge and block it from leaking outward. Now I have a tiny set of bellows, which is not cutting it. You see there on the left. The coals couldn't keep their heat long enough to heat the shoe and this won't work for me because in colonial times they had massive bellows to keep the coals at the right temperature. So I had to improvise. I got a shop vac, reversed the hose, and voila! The air put out enough heat to keep the coals hot. My blacksmithing mentor, Robert Earhart, said this is how he started his fires when he was 15. So that's where I got the idea. Thank you. I wanna even see how the heels coming up pretty high, which is not bad, but we want it nice and flat for it's going to go on the shoe and it's coming, goes in pretty badly right there. So I'm going to try and
teaching your horse to be prepared for this kind of work is critical as well. Having played the games that we do gets her all prepared to stand quietly for what I'm going to be doing with her. All right, so it seems to fit okay, but it looks like I'm gonna have to bring these, the heel bits out. So that's what we heat them up for. Okay. Go ahead. Alright. See if it fits. Alright. Look at you. Look at you so silly. Yep. Alright. Okay. Alright. Okay. Much better. Paying attention. It's okay. It's the first time. Yeah. What a good girl. Alright, so the, the the heels need to these need to come out. Okay. Out. Get some of the schmutz off. All right, one more time. Okay, that's the pretty good. We can see? Yeah. Okay. Crunch. Okay. Let's go see. It's been too long. Do. Oh, I like that. Okay. Well, coach, you're right for me. Huh? It'll be alright. It'll be fine. You've seen this done many times. 
that went right through. I wanted to do four. <laughs> okay. Just using a house hammer <laughs> doesn't feel right. All right. Okay. One more. Okay. Are we ready? That's looking ah. pretty. I don't like how that toe is popping. What I learned from this is fire management and safety, also how to start a coal fire, as I've never used coals before, so this was a learning experience for me. Also, how to ensure your horse cooperates. She has to stand very quietly while I do seemingly strange things to her feet. She had to trust me, trust my tools, and trust that what I was doing for her was actually good. I think it was very successful, so we're gonna see. Next time, I'll be training her to the harness and hitching her up to the cart and then we're gonna start our cart training, which with the help of Nate Bowers should go very successfully.